there's been a lot of controversy about the uh, <coughs> day, daylight fireball of August 10th, 1972. Um, <laughs> some people thought it was a UFO, eyewitnesses, um, people who've seen the photographs, that's probably not the case. Um, there's also been speculation about the size of the thing. The official record states that it was 45 feet in diameter at the biggest, at the largest. Um, I want to show you a picture which was taken from, of it, from Jackson Lake, Wyoming at a range of approximately 170 mi 175 miles line of sight. And um, as you can see, it was visible to the naked eye or they wouldn't have photographed it. Um, but uh, the fireball itself is hard to determine how, what the size would be from photographs because the flames and the glow kind of conceals the actual size. So what we'll do is concentrate on the trail. That's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to put up some statistics here, a little graph. As you can see, <coughs> I'm concentrating on the width of the trail, not the object itself. And in the previous photo from uh, Jackson Lake, Wyoming, if, uh, if it was truly 45 feet in diameter to the naked eye, using the technique shown, it would have been less or just just over a thousandth of an inch in, in diameter to the naked eye, which would have been invisible um, to the naked eye. If it was a mile or larger, if it was a mile, let's say, in diameter, it would have been over a tenth of an inch, the trail, the trail itself. And it would have been visible to the naked eye. And as you can see in the picture, it you know, it is visible to the naked eye. Now, I want to show you a second photograph that was taken nearly directly beneath this, I think it was an asteroid, frankly, and it was huge. It was taken directly beneath it at uh, Reynolds Mountain in uh, Glacier National Park by uh, the mother of a friend of mine uh, who was a teenager at the time. She, my friend, was a teenager at the time, I believe, and I was too. I witnessed it in Idaho below this, and um, I just happened to be out backpacking, and I saw it too. And uh, in any case, so this photo shows it directly overhead and pretty close to the, the supposed perigee or lowest point of its travel across the sky, so it was approximately 35 to 50 miles at the most above their heads. And as you can see, the trail is much more pronounced. They just missed the fireball in the photo, unfortunately, but something moving that fast, it's kind of hard to catch. Um, <clears throat> I haven't done the math on uh, what would be visible at that range of say 35 to 50 miles um, but obviously it's a lot larger than at the 175 mile range which was off to the west from Jackson Lake Wyoming so what do you people think out there? Do you people think we've had a fast one pulled on us by the government just to keep us from panicking about something like this happening in the future? I mean, a, a one mile or larger asteroid hitting the Earth would do pretty intense damage. Um, it's now generally believed that the asteroid that was ten, about 10 miles in diameter that hit in the Yucatan Peninsula extincted the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. So that did worldwide damage. This was much smaller, uh, maybe a tenth of that size, but um, 
nonetheless, I believe the entire northwestern United States and part of Canada would have been obliterated, and it probably would have set off Yellowstone caldera, volcanic caldera as well. Uh, I'd appreciate your comments and get into a discussion about it. Um, I can't reveal the source of the second photograph because it's confidential. Um, have a good day and I hope you enjoyed this video.